Ain't you sick of giving me your money? Oh, it's oh, oh. I know he yeah. didn't do it, baby. Whoa, 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 where you going? Now I'm about to go make these bubbles. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? I'm Bradley D.L.O. Thomas. I'm a marketing professional by day, a beat maker, producer, and MC by night. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Corey Dash, the UB Whitmore, um, CEO um, and owner of Media 22 LLC. Um, also, you know, been known to jump on the mic here and there, and you know, still doing my beat thing. Um, so, you know, yes, that's, that's what we do. That's how I get down. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Opal, uh, Opal Elisa, uh, I work in finance by day as a director of multicultural business strategy and also an MC known to get on the mic and spoken word artist as well. Now, nah, you know, I'm not going to let you get away with being that humble, Opal. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. She's an award winning author. She does Playwright. shows, corporate events, dope MC, poet, recording with Juicy J. Uh, named one of the top 51 influential black leaders in 2020 by Madison 365 Media. So we gotta we gotta right. give you your your shout outs right now. Thank <laughs> you. I appreciate that. I'm gonna have to replay this every morning just to get me. In <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, and um, we're so glad to have you on this podcast today. Um, the focus uh, is going to be around credit and predatory. Mm -hmm. Lennon and Opal um, was very open and, and, and willing to, to kind of answer some questions that we may have. Um, I know that I've been through some trials and tribulations with credit and with predatory lending. Uh, so if you have ever been in that boat, this is the show for you. Yes. Uh, don't, you know, don't skip past this. Take notes uh, because I know she's going to be dropping some jewels on us. Thanks. Sure. Sure. I have no fear of airing my dirty laundry uh, for the benefit of <laughs> others for this one. And it, it is dirty when it comes to uh, what I've been trying to, uh, I would say continuous journey for me, um, repairing uh, my own credit and just learning along the way. So yeah, I'm right. definitely here to share that real experience. All right, cool, cool. That, that information that you, that you don't get in school, but I think that you, that mm -hmm. needs to be in school. Yes. Um, oh, sure. <laughs> because I think, I think credit catch, catches most people off guard because they're not, especially when you're young, you're not really that, that aware of it. Um, and some of your practices, you're getting into some bad habits, myself included. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not till I got older to see, you know, what that impact is, especially when you start trying to get that car and start trying to get that house <laughs> and things of that sort, um, or trying to get, you know, loans for a business and things of that sort. Um, mm -hmm. And now jobs, yes. jobs be looking up your credit too. That's true. Yeah. Thanks. So it's, you know, I think this is a, a crucial topic and and glad we're going to be tackling this in episode two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I will add to that uh, jobs. I have had a volunteer like I volunteered with organizations and they have looked up my credit. Oh, like, wow. Like, yeah. That's crazy. So I've been like, wow, like, OK, like y'all approach me, but y'all want to make sure that this is OK. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, it is real. It is real. That's what's up. Cool. Uh, let's jump into our first question. You know, I, I think we want to get things started off and, and, you know, and get some general terms down and some basic and understanding. So, you know, our first question basic is, you know, what is, you know, what is a good credit score? Yeah. So, uh, like I said, I'll share my story. Just disclaimer here. I do work in finance, but I'm not a financial advisor, but uh, I will share what I know. And I know a lot because I've had to, uh, kind of pull myself out of this hole. So like good credit score is really like anything upper 600s um, to about 740. So about like 670 to 740 is going to be considered good. 
Um, and then excellent is anything that's over um, 800. Um, and really looking at anything that is going to be, you know, below um, 600 as being really poor. Um, mm. credit. And I, I say that to say, like, I, I used to think about credit like grades, right? I was like, oh, okay, mm. most people are doing well. No, that, that's, oh, yeah. that's, that's false, right? Most mm. people are actually in the very poor, poor, or fair, right? And mm. then, it, and we're not, we're not, again, we're not really taught that in school. And that's probably why we're in those boats. Um, but yeah, those you can, and those are kind of, and they're, they vary a little bit. That's Equifax that I'm kind of quoting, but those are kind of, they're pretty general al along those lines. So don't feel bad is what I say. If you don't have, you know, a 670, do not feel mm -hmm. bad. The folks with 670 and above are like doing really good, even though that's called good. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. So you mentioned, uh, you mentioned uh, Equifax. So uh, what, what exactly is Equifax? Uh, when it comes to credit scores, like what, what kind of company is that? Yeah, so it'd be one of the credit bureaus, right? It's just one of the folks who just think about it as one of these entities who's taking a look at um, the, the credit you, you've been extended, the ways that you've been paying your bills, and they have come up with this, this score for you. So typically lenders will take a look at uh, Equifax as well um, as TransUnion, and then sometimes they'll even use other parties to kind of figure out what score they're going to go off of. So if you have um, any of like some of the free tools out there, you'll be able to kind of see, you can go to any of those sites and they'll be able to kind of pull your score. And if you've kind of got all three of those, you can really kind of tell what your score is probably going to look like to lenders. So, you know, you know, some people that, that may not have pulled their score yet, you know, I know uh, before I started constantly monitoring my score, I was always told, Oh man, don't 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 pull your credit. That's gonna pull your your credit score down. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, That's true. So can you, you know, how do you work around that of making sure that you know you're able to check your credit, but it's not affecting your score negatively? Yeah, that's a good point that you bring up. Like a lot of those are kind of like we've just been told like we shouldn't look at it. And I, I love when you said constantly, cause that's me, I am constantly looking at my score, constantly mm -hmm. getting these numbers. So um, it, you can you can do it through some of the things that I've named, uh, myfreecreditreport.com, myannualcreditreport.com, mm -hmm. and they will pull it and it won't affect your credit. If you are um, actually like a part of a credit union, uh, they can right. do that for you too. And it, it won't be called like what's like a hard inquiry where if you were mm -hmm. going in to get a home or a car or something like that, right. that may affect your um, credit. So usually now they're really good about telling you, hey, we can pull this and it won't impact your credit. So just make sure you kind of see that um, disclaimer that says it won't impact your credit to look at. There are so many, so many tools out there that you can see it without impacting your score. Hmm. Hmm. That's, that's, that's good. That's great information to know uh, for those who uh, need to look up their score. I used to think the same thing is both of y'all. Like I didn't really mm -hmm. feel comfortable looking it up. Um, would you say, and I guess in today's world, we all know that credit is important, but is credit actually more important than cash at this point? You know, physical mm -hmm. currency or, you know, what, what, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I would say credit is super important, right? Like, so cash is king when it comes to you. If you have a whole bunch of money, I mean, a whole bunch of money you may be able to get around having a credit score, right? If you have hundreds of thousands of dollars, several thousands of dollars, you may be able to say rent, you're trying to rent an apartment, right? And they're like, your credit score is too low. You may be able to say, hey, if I pay not only first and last month rent, but if I pay you six months ahead of time, might they make an exception for you? Mm. Sure, but the typical person, most of us don't have six months of any rent um, sitting around in addition to moving costs to be able to do that. Whereas if you've got decent credit, then you'll be able to just have to kind of pay the regular way. And there's a lot of um, thought and article, thought leadership and articles around, you know, the high cost of being poor. Um, and a lot of that comes down to that credit score, right? So you can, um, if you are paying a high interest rate, if you're paying, which, and these sound crazy, but they are not. If you're paying 25, 29%, say interest rate on a vehicle, which I've done, I've had to do that because, too, right? You, yep. you too, right? Um, you, I, I was paying a car note, you know, that was 550 plus dollars, you know, for a Ford. When someone with good credit is paying 550 plus dollars for an Audi, um, you know what I mean? Or, or a Lincoln SUV. And mm -hmm. it's because, you mm -hmm. know, you're paying so much more in interest. So I would say that credit is huge in that way. Unless you have so much money that it doesn't matter, 
credit is going to definitely be more important um, as far as what you end up paying kind of at the end of the month, at the end of the year. Right. So, you know, when it comes to credit in this credit score, what are all of the contributors? Because, I've, I've, you know, I've talked with some people and they, and they tell me like, oh, I, I pay my stuff. I pay my stuff on on time. So, you know, my, my, my credit got to be good um w- without checking it i'm like yo you need, you, may, you may need to look into that bro because i know there's a lot of different things that contribute to that score it's just not being up on payments even though i know that is very important mm-hmm. but you know for the people you know watching or listening what are all the things that contribute to that score yeah there's there's so many factors and and yes paying things on time as you said that that is an important factor um, but it's also what you're paying right Uh, unfortunately right now like if you are renting like i said i'm like i'm renting like Mm -hmm. i've been paying rent on time for 20 years right (laughs) if you don't pay rent on time you are out on the street Um, Mm -hmm. but that doesn't help my credit one bit right Mm -hmm. so that's a bill that's on time but doesn't help um so on time and you have to make sure that it's certain things utilities do help credit cards do help Mm -hmm. um but it also is really looking you know what's your available credit right so if i have you know four different credit cards with $5,000 limit or something on each of them, that's potentially $20,000, right, of credit that's available to me. But if all those cards are maxed, right, Mm -hmm. then I don't have that available credit to me, right? So that's why they always, um, you always hear folks quoting, you know, you want to keep your balances low. You want to keep them about Mm -hmm. 30% low when you're talking about um, cards, right? So to make sure that your available credit is there, they're also going to look at, especially if like you're really looking into like buying a home, they're going to look at your debt to income, right? How much do you owe compared to how much you bring in each year? Mm -hmm. So this is where Mm -hmm. I think folks too get in in big trouble and, um, or I should really say have the assumption that, oh, if I make a lot of money, I can get whatever I want. Unfortunately, right. you can't. I know that firsthand too. <laughs> I, I, I different, different levels of my life. Like, I can get whatever I want. You're like, oh, ma'am, your student loans are also, <laughs> are also big ball. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that back to income just takes it takes it way down for you. So yeah, sorry, back to your question, Corey. I would say that paying things on time, um, mm-hmm. looking at making sure you know how much available credit you really have, and then the age of that credit matters too, right? So how mm-hmm. long have you had those accounts is super super important because that again it's they're just really looking at your credit worthiness what's your likelihood on paying something back how stable are you right so that's another thing if you have um a card and you keep it low like don't close that account right because that has long age on it which is going to be a positive factor um for for your credit just kind of keep it low maybe do one purchase a month pay it off but keep it on there uh same thing um with actually um age of bank accounts um even helps as well so um, even if you, it's not your primary account, you might want to just keep like a little savings there or something. But again, those things kind of say, okay, w- we know Opal, we've been dealing with her. She's had a relationship with this financial institution. Um, she's been pretty stable and those little things kind of add up. Um, they're not all weighted equally. Um, also, you want to keep delinquencies off. Um, those can hit you hard. You can work really hard and, and pay some things off and keep things low and then forget about one bill. And if it goes all the way to a collector, that's gonna knock you down. Um, you may work two months to get eight points, and you get that one to link with hmm. there, it's gonna take 10 from you. Um, and it can be really discouraging. So, really hmm. looking in one thing I heard that was um a piece of advice. Um, and I don't even remember where I heard it, but I heard that uh, people without money run from um bill collectors and their debts, and people with money know to run towards them. And what that was really saying is like, if you have a bill and you know you can't pay it, like, pick up the phone call and see if there's a way that you can prevent that uh, account from going into a bill collector and hitting your credit and see generally there's grace periods, um, exceptions, some ways to, to keep it from really becoming a delinquency is going to be important. That's a key one right there because I, I remember being told not to answer the phone. <laughs> People call. <laughs> we were top, right? <laughs> okay. Oh, you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't answer that phone. Mm-hmm. That. Or just be <laughs> It'd be unplugged. <laughs> or I remember I remember one time when I, I owed um, a lot of money on a credit card and I knew their 800 number. So I just put their name in the phone and, and you know what I'm saying? Just muted it <laughs> like every time like <laughs> it was calling because I was like, I got your money. Why are you calling me? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to tell you the same thing. But clearly, that's not the way that you can't run from your problems. I'm glad mm-hmm. that you said that. Um Jay Z said something in a song. I remember he said, "Don't run from your, don't run from the pain, 
mm-hmm. run towards it or something. I right. forgot which album he said it on, but that's so true. Um, so this got me thinking about credit and people that don't have any credit or they're going through tough situations um, and they just, you know, kind of in a rut. So are there any suggestions or strategies that you use or you would advise people maybe think about if they don't have any credit established or they did have some bad credit that happened? Like, are there any any tricks that you've, you've seen people use to uh, help their credit score? Yeah, yeah. So I think what's really hard is that like that old saying it it takes money to make money is true right Mm -hmm. right because the first things i'll say that you can really do is like get a secured card right so that just means i put two i give i put two hundred dollars in this bank or this institution and they give me a credit card worth two hundred dollars because my credit's so bad they can't trust me with nothing but my own money but the positive is as i'm spending that i'm building positive credit with that and they'll probably continue to increase it right but many folks don't have a 200 extra dollars, right? right. Laying yeah. around. So I, I think one thing that I always say is like, reach out to folks like smarter than you, right? So like, um, I, I'm always gonna advocate for credit unions because if you if you go into any credit union, there's usually a few offices to the side and they have financial advisors in there. And many mm. of us think that, you know, if you ain't got a whole mm. bunch of money, why would I even go in there, right? But the thing is, they will be willing to help you. Now, they're not going to sit with you like every day, but they will definitely sit down with you once. They will print off that credit, um, your credit report for you again, free of charge, again, without it hurting your credit score and really kind of walk with you and kind of help you kind of look at things. And then if you have that relationship, um, it always comes down to people, right? There are so many policies, so many rules, but it always comes down to people. And they may be able to make an exception for you, right? At the end of the day, it's always a person generally saying yes or no, especially if you walk in and you're not just going online, right? Um, you may start it online, but if you walk in and you say, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. And they say, yeah, we've got this secure card. And you're like, I really don't have $200. You know, what, what can I do to kind of get this started um, and get that going as a possibility? And a lot of us, and this is something I didn't know either, already have access to some revolving lines of credit at our financial institutions, right? So sometimes they're um, mm-hmm. called like over that overdraft protection. Sometimes they are called um, payday advances. And typically it's like, you know, 250 um, to $500 that you can just tap into, right? That does hit your credit report and does show and is positive. So you may have that available to you right now. And you're thinking you have no options and that might be there. But again, if you don't ask, if you don't run towards it, um, then you're not going to know uh, that it's there because unfortunately, um, they don't advertise those too well. It's actually part mm-hmm. of my agent. I'm just trying to say, hey, y'all should really advertise this, especially if you want to reach younger folks, low income folks, people of color. That needs to be said. That should be shouted from the rooftops. There's $500 available to, to folks at any time uh, because mm-hmm. many emergencies that come up are less than $500, right? But it can it can ruin your whole life if you if your car breaks down, you can't get to work and you can't get additional money. Just right. to um, really find out what's available to you, I think is huge. Okay. Could I take this opportunity to um, kind of clear up some um, myths, I guess, <laughs> or things that are commonly heard in, associated with, in association with credit? Um, you know, I think that, Many times some people are, you know, are, are, you know, me, myself included, too embarrassed to go check oh. <laughs> because they may, because they feel like, oh, man, I've messed up on this, 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 and this. I know it's bad. I don't need to go look at it. Yeah. But, you know, at least from my own experience, as I learned more about credit, I found out that some of those things actually didn't contribute to the score, mm-hmm. um, but I thought they did. So, you know, I'm going to just throw a few things out there that, you know, either I've heard has been from my experience that some people may believe are contributors. And I would like you to say, yes, this is a, you know, this does contribute or does it contributes, you know, maybe in this just this way or does not. So the one thing that you already dismissed was was rent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pay your rent on time. Mm-hmm. But that's not a contributor. Um, yep. You also said school loans show up but not as not directly for your score but in your um uh debt to income ratio correct Mm -hmm. yep yeah and they can Um, oh sorry go ahead no go ahead no please finish that thought i'll just go add to that that's another place and personally i've I've had to do this too um that's another place where run towards that i Mm. 
that they will work with you. They they are required by law. Obama did some great things, not to get too political, but he did some great things on making sure that this can go really low. You can do uh, you can do deferments. You can um, have things held off. You can have it based on your income. You can have it um, as low as you need it, right, with student loans. But the one thing you can't do is ignore it. If you ignore it, then you will be hit with that. They want you to pay like ridiculous amount. If you have a lot of student debt, like I've had and do have, they can have monthly payments of $1,900 and and think that that's fine. And then you look up three months, you've been ignoring it. Well, now you in a hole for a used car price and you're like, I can't Mm -hmm. do it. If you you would have called, if you would have written a lot of this stuff you do online. I haven't had to talk to anybody in a long time, which I appreciate. Um, because they just have all this self-service, but you can put it in there and say, Hey, for this reason. And, and some of it can just be like, you can just say, I've had, a, I've had a thing that affected me. You don't have to get into too much detail and they'll mm-hmm. give you six months, right? You can get mm-hmm. it for parents for up to two years and then renew if you need to, but you got to run towards it. Right. If you ignore that student loan and student loans will get you quick too, and you can be garnished. And that's the last thing that you want to happen is to ignore something. They stop calling you, then they write your job. And then your check is short and then you're in a worse position and good luck trying to get out of that one. Right. Yeah. right. So what about um, electric bill? There are, well, utilities do count. Utilities do yeah. show up and, and they count. Um, yeah. So that's another one. Uh, if, you, if you live in Wisconsin, uh, M- MG&E, Align, if you have a trouble, <laughs> let me recall, it ain't been too long, but I believe if you're having trouble between November and May, <laughs> they right. hold that off for you, but you got to let them know, right? You got to let them know to try to stay in good standing. But yeah, utilities utilities will definitely show up. You're late with MG&E, you're going to see that red on there um, easily. Yeah, so they right. do show up. And there's, um, the problem is they show up poorly. Um, and now they're starting mm-hmm. to do things where they can show up positively if you pay. I'm in a certain way. I can't even, maybe one okay. of y'all can um, recall what, what it is that is, is it? Oh, I can't think of it. But it's something that's helping other ways that you pay start to add. Because they recognize that a lot of things right. that you pay aren't hitting it positively, even though they'll hit it negatively if you miss it. Right. So the uh, one of the new things that have popped up that I've seen, you know, you know they got the commercials for them now, and they got commercials for everything. Um, talking about, oh man, if if you pay on your subscription to like Netflix or Hulu or something, that may may positively influence your credit. Do you, is that something that you can speak to? Do you, are you you know is that something that you you've been aware of or seen? Yeah, and it just it just came to you. I was thinking of Experian Boost, so I'm not mm. sure if um, Netflix yeah. is included in that. It could be, um, but right. there are some things you can wrap into that to have it affect um, positively. But yeah, I'm not sure about Netflix, but I will say if you're paying Netflix like I am, where it just automatically comes off of a credit card, mm-hmm. paying that credit card on time is going mm-hmm. to be beneficial, and that's one of the that's mm-hmm. one of the tricks you can do. Like if you want to keep a balance low, like right. I have one card that is really only use for a couple subscriptions. I have another card that I really only use for like health stuff so that those always stay low, but then they always get paid every month mm-hmm. to, to keep that good standing. Okay. And I, I, I wanted to add something to what you said too, Opal. I like the fact that you you mentioned that you put your bills on your credit card because what, what recently happened to me actually was that I had a credit card that I had paid off, but I stopped using it. Mm. And when I stopped using it, they said, all right, well, you don't need it. And, you know, almost took it away from me if I hadn't been paying attention to it and would have affected my credit score. So I like that you mentioned that you put your bills on there and you keep it low, mm-hmm. sort of still be alive and they won't they won't take it from you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because that's a huge thing. Yeah, not using it. Uh, and again, that just affects that available credit, right? Like you got a credit right. card that you ain't been using, it's fine, but it's kicking a thousand dollars of available credit to you each month. They so take that away, that's a hit. That's right, a hit. Yeah. You did nothing wrong, like you said. Nothing mm-hmm, wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's just one other thing that you know that that's come up that you know I want to get your perspective on, and, and that is um uh paying your car note. Um yeah. and how and how that affects or does not affect um your credit score as well. 
Yeah, so um, paying your car note on time will be a positive thing. So that just looks on your credit like a loan for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, again, a car loan can be good um, with age, right? Because that can be, you know, three, five years, depending on what kind of terms you got for the loan. And I would say balance that, right? Like as you get savvy, as you get in a better position, um, are you able to refinance that and, and make that possibly be for a lower rate? That, that could be positive. But yeah, as long as you're paying that and hitting that, that does show positive um, for it being on time. Um, you're also bringing bringing it down, the total debt, you're bringing that down each time mm. you say that. Um, so yeah, I would say just balance that. Like after, like each year, right? I just say like after each year with something like a car loan or like if you get a raise, after a raise, after a new job, really look and see like, is, is this what I can get? Um, if your score increases and see, you know, should I refinance? Um, does it make sense to pay it off early? Or I'm only saving a few bucks and then I don't have my oldest account um, on my credit score anymore. And will that actually mm -hmm. hurt me? So really looking at mm -hmm. and balancing those things. Right. Oh, dope. Dope. That's super cool. So I think I have one more question, which kind of leads into um, another topic that we, we we're going to talk about today which is which is predatory lending mm -hmm. um you kind of mentioned you kind of mentioned some examples before but overall i guess from your perspective how have you seen um the impacts of credit and how that plays a pole plays a part in systemic racism you know from from opportunities and just from all you know uh credit in general you know because you you know you you you've come across a lot of things working mm -hmm. at CUNA and working in different financial systems. So, you know, I would just like to hear your perspective on it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, predatory lending is like a, a passion of mine, right? There, there are two things that, that really get me. One is gentrification and, and the other one mm -hmm. is predatory lending because they, mm -hmm. they harm uh, folks of color so much, right? They harm low income folks so much. So, Predatory lending, like you, you thinking about um, just the interest rate being so high is the main factor that makes something predatory, where you might say, um, and, and folks are paying like 350 to 500 APR, right? And this is something that's accruing daily. So you're, oh. no matter what you took out, if you actually follow the terms of loan, this is following it, not missing a payment, not missing a day, you are paying three and five and so much more times, right? What you took out. And it's just unfair because if you had good credit and were able to go to like a bank or a credit union or a, a FinTech, you would be able to get that for so much, so much lower. And it just, it just isn't fair. And uh, it's a passion of mine because um, I definitely um, is really because of, of payday lending. And it's, um, you asked about kind of that systematic piece, right? So we mm -hmm. had, uh, I would say just go to like, okay, newamerica.org. If you're kind of like into data and kind of a geek and maps and stuff like I am. Um, if you go to newamerica.org, it's free. It's a nonprofit organization that put this up. It will actually show you like the whole United States map. And then it'll show mm -hmm. you um, the areas that are saturated with more people of color, right? So it's kind of a gray scale and the darker the gray, the more folks of color are in these areas, right? And then you can kind of click, you can click, um, banks, you can click uh, credit unions, and then you can click, um, they call them alternative financial services, but the, your, those are going to be your pre, your um, predatory lenders, your payday loans, and your check cashing places. Okay. The more diverse, the more people of color, you're going to see they the, the, the predatory lenders show up in red dots. Mm. Regardless of where you go, I don't care if you are in Montana, I don't care if you are in Miami, I don't care if you're in LA or if you're in Madison, Wisconsin, you go look at Madison, Wisconsin and see the amount of red sprinkled in the areas that are more diverse. Mm -hmm. And you can, the cool thing about that is you can go down to the neighborhood. Um, so it's on purpose, wow. right? It's on purpose. It states back to right. redlining is why, you know, some of our places mm -hmm. are so segregated to when black folks couldn't own homes in certain places. Right. And right. predatory lenders have really preyed on people um, who don't have the access and also who don't have the transportation. So they do this in urban areas and they also do this in rural areas where they might be the closest thing in walking distance or you got to pass three check cashing places to get to a regular bank, right? right. And so again, I, I get passionate about it because it's, it's on purpose, right? They know, they know who they're targeting and it's horrible because it's the folks who have the lease. It's the folks who don't own a home and we know that home ownership is correlated with wealth. It's the folks who aren't in a position to have inherited money um, to start out better. 
right? And, and to have something mm-hmm. to, to leave mm-hmm. um, to, to their kids. So um, there is so much systematic um, stuff in there. We don't have time to get into it um, all today, um, but it's huge. So um, for for me, um, it in it came down to um, taking out a loan, like a two thousand dollar loan, right, to, to help family, right? Mm-hmm. And, and this was like not that long ago either. Right. I'm talking about like like 2013, mm-hmm. probably. Right. Mm-hmm. I got some money um, to help my mom because she had had to move suddenly and wasn't making a whole bunch of money at my job. You know, and um, I paid back ten thousand dollars in one year um, mm-hmm. which was wow. because I had to continue taking out yep. other ones and then finally got it off. And again, I say. Go talk to folks smarter than you. It wasn't finally until I went and I said, okay, I got to get this. I got to get this together, right? I know that like my whole check is about gone, right? Because I'm mm-hmm. trying to, so I went in and uh, one of the financial advisors there, he, I went in on Saturday morning when they got time for folks, you know what I'm saying? He, <laughs> right, right. He was like, he was like, oh no, <laughs> you can't, you can't do this. Yeah. And he was like, you know, and I, I don't know if this will work for everybody, but this was good for me. He said, go ahead and, and close that account. We'll open up another one for you. You'll work with them on paying off that delinquent one. But you got to start getting your paycheck not in, and not affected this way. Because, of course, I had direct deposit because you have to do it that way. Yep. Um, but again, if I didn't reach out, what would I have just done? Continue not having anything, trying to take out other ones. And, and they make it so easy right now with these installment loans are also called that you'll, you'll see online. Um, but if you really look at it, and they have to show you by law what it looks like. Um, if you were to actually pay this thing back, it's ridiculous how much you would have to to really pay back if you followed that, right? The only real way to get out of it um, is to stop or to be able to like pay the whole whole thing off. You know, you would think that there's some sort of like legislation or some sort of group trying to knock something something like this down because you're you're literally robbing people of their future. Yeah. Yes. You know, it's, it's terrible. There are like places like New York. You, there, New York is one that's really Mm. really beat down on that. Like if you, even if you go mm. to some of the online ones, they're like, if you're in New York, we can't service you uh, because New York is one of the places who's done that. California is doing something. Wisconsin mm. actually has some stuff um, around it too. But okay. so slowly but surely um, they're kind of cracking down. But yeah, they've been just allowed to prey on the people who need it. And the unfortunate thing is mm. you if your credit score is low, you can't go anywhere else, right? I didn't, you know, I, when this happened to me, I had degrees and I understood money a little bit, right? Like I went mm-hmm. to my financial institution that I had had a 10 year relationship with and said, Hey, this is what I need. This is what's happening. Sorry, mm-hmm. your credit score is too low. Sorry, your, your debt to income, you know, those things. So um, unfortunately, um, Lisa Servin wrote a book called The Unbanking of America. And she's a professor who actually went undercover and worked at a, a mm-hmm. at a payday lending place um, mm. for a year and saw and understood, right, like the the ways that they have really studied, unfortunately, the ways that they have studied their consumer, right, makes it right. They, their menu is right. They know when to be open. They know who to staff, right? And it's so mm. Mm. Um, hard um, because you don't have any other option. Um, in many cases, it's just like, am I going to, you know, yeah, I know this is a bad financial decision, but I have to pay my rent, right? Mm. We have to eat, and those right. are the decisions that um, most Americans are faced with a lot. And I, I emphasize that and say most, because I think we tend to think of that as the exception as someone who's living paycheck to paycheck or even mm-hmm. paycheck before paycheck. And that's not, that's like most folks are living like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can relate to that story 100%. I lived off, I was taking out payday loans to pay off payday loans. I'm like, yep. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a good feeling at all. Yeah. Um, thank you for that book too. So Unbanking America. I think that's mm-hmm. something that all the people should definitely check out. Yeah. Um, so as we're looking at predatory lending, you started talking about the rates are, mm-hmm. are some of the rates, are the rates kind of, we, we know they're ridiculously high, but are there any, have you ever seen anything where it's kind of small, but then adjustable rate where it can change, you know, throughout the term of the loan? Yeah, yeah. So there are there are some of those, um, some for good, right? Some okay. payday lenders, I would say, with a heart um, or a soul or a conscious or whatever's making them do it. Uh, some will say, hey, we're going to kind of lend to you. But if you prove your creditworthiness with us, right, your interest rate can go down, 
right? And then you mm-hmm. kind of have to, I've, seen, I've done it. I've gone through, you know, like they have quizzes for you and they really try to kind of teach you about things along the way, usually online. Um, but so they can kind of work with you, but you're never really going to get down to a rate that would really be fair um, right, against right. something else, right? So you're, you're just not going to get there. And I think that um, I'm not a homeowner yet, but I know that there's um, with, with fixed rate mortgages, with adjustable rate mortgages, um, advantages um, and disadvantages um, to both, right? So if you're going into a fixed rate, that means that for the life of the loan, I'm going to pay the same amount um, going ahead. It could be predatory if you don't read that fine print and it's adjustable and it balloons up. Mm. Um, that could be something that can harm you. Um, but if it's, if it's not predatory and it's something that, you know, you're not going to live there too long, then you might want to do something like that. And that's a little bit beyond, again, the, the realm of my experience and expertise. Um, but that, it, that is, again, where I just say, reach out to somebody smarter than you that's really looking at that. And for everything, look at the fine print, because mm. when you were, remember, I think we forget that when you're getting a loan, like you're buying something, you're, you're actually buying something. And I think we tend to think, at least I did you're giving me something when I get a loan, right? So you're excited and you're happy and it's allowing you to get what you want to get, but you got to look at that fine print in there to make sure that it's not something that's actually harming you and really understand what you'd be paying if you went through the life of the loan, what you'd be paying if you were able to pay it off early, um, because those are going to be very two different things um, in many cases. Um, To piggyback off of that, um, you know, sometimes you'll see, you'll see different advertisements saying, you know, no hidden fees. And then it makes you think, what have I, <laughs> what I that did have the hidden fees in there. And sometimes we're just not aware. And I know a lot of that comes in the, in the fine print as well, but what are some things or, you know, something that should, that we would see or read that would, that should give us alarm, like, Oh, hold on. I need you guys to explain this, you know, a little bit more. So what's, what's kind of behind that hidden fees? You know, what, what are they? And, and how do we look out for them? Yeah, sometimes there's so many different hidden fees, right? Like the a one-time additional finance fee, a processing fee that might be on there, a fee mm. if you want it to come out automatically, um, a fee if you want your, your paper bill to come and it might be defaulted um, to the paper bill. There's so many things that you really have to look at. And, you know, and that's before thinking of different taxes um, that might right. be applicable to, to anything that you're purchasing or taking out there. I mean, I think cell phone bills are notorious for this. Uh, mm. I, I won't say the carrier, but I definitely left the left carrier and switched to another one because I was like, every every month, I was like, no, this doesn't add up. <laughs> every right. month, I was like, what is mm-hmm. going on? Because they had so, I mean, taxes, like, there literally, I think, was a tax on the tax. Like, it was so much mm. stuff in there that they were just, they. The, and then when I would call, the rep would walk me right through and she would show me how it was like $70 more than I thought it was going to be. And it was all these additional fees on everything on each line. Cause we got family mm-hmm. that was right. hit. And I was like, well, I'll be damned. That do add up to 200 a month for a plan of 150 Right? So yeah, you yep. got to look at those things and see what's a one-time, what's a reoccurring. Uh, Cause mm-hmm. they get away with it. And I would say, you know, uh, DLO, we were just saying that it's, it's really good to have that bill come off on that credit card, but you gotta, you gotta watch it. Cause that's the loophole too. Um, mm-hmm. I, what's the extra going to be? Even if I'm not watching it, right. Then I could be paying something additional. I could have thought I did a trial. It could have bumped me up to pro on something super easy if you're not mm-hmm. really looking. So I would say, even if you've got monthly automatic payments, look at it. Look at it each month and and see if you might be able to to get a better deal. Call and see if you might get a better deal because yeah, they'll just add stuff on there. You're paying it. Why why would they stop? Mm, that's true. Word. That's true. Wow. So pretty much the moral of the story is we don't want to mess with the, these payday lending stores. No. Um, I've been through it. Opal's telling you, she's been through it. Um. <laughs> And the better, the, I guess the better option is, is to, you were saying, you know, reach out to a bank or maybe a credit union mm-hmm. or um, are there any like online resources that people can kind of go to, um, to kind of help manage their money. So they're not in a situation where they're even thinking about having to go to the store mm-hmm. um, to, to pay, you know, 300, 400% a day uh, that I've, that I've seen people do. Um, and they're really predatory too. Cause I've, I've gotten letters in the mail of mm-hmm. just like, 
and then it looks like a check too. It's like, hey, here's five thousand yeah. dollars. Like, right. and I'm thinking mm-hmm. like, yeah, what's going on? And then you know, the, I read the fine print. I'm like, oh, they trying to rob me. So, are there any other resources that you would advise people kind of look at or consider when they're dealing with predatory lending to help them get out that situation so that they can start building some financial wealth going down going down the line? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I am a fan of like Credit Karma. I know not everybody is, but if you don't like Credit Karma, there are so many others that are out there. Credit Wise, I think, is another one that I get um, mm-hmm. through through my financial institution. Uh, but they will oftentimes work with um, lenders who uh, might help you if you're in that fair, right? You're you're coming up from mm-hmm. from the poor credit uh, up into the fair and be able to give you rates that aren't ideal, but are way better than, again, that 359% APR that that you're going to get somewhere else. And then just, again, look at what is already kind of available to you at the financial institutions um, that you have and see if there's any um, community places um, that can help you too. I think especially sometimes when it's it's a lower thing, like I've I've had to use this um, definitely back in the day, um, like, you know, for those who are more local, like Middleton Outreach Mm -hmm. Ministry, um, if you live with kind of in a certain zip code of Madison or Middleton in there, you know, they'll give you 200 bucks toward rent if you if you can't pay it, right? There are different organizations that can help as I see all these different places kind of pop up um, that, that do offer help or can find to get you kind of help with some of those emergency needs versus going oh, to a payday yeah. lender. Um, yeah. I'm thinking of uh, the Progress Center for Black Women, sends folks mm-hmm. places like reach out to folks, reach out to your network because there are places that can help with those one-time things. Because again, it's almost always like this one-time thing that starts you in this hole and this process. Um, and, and pretty much anybody, you know, with, with a job and direct deposit can get these loans and it just really messes you up. So I would say definitely um, exhaust more of your options and don't be ashamed, right? Right. For me, it, it was that shame. Yeah. Like, okay, mm-hmm. have a decent job. Okay, For I real. got education. Like, I don't need everybody to know that I can't help my mama out with this. So I'm gonna go quietly mm-hmm. over here and do this online loan. And it was just screwed for a whole year when if I would have spoke up, I think to more folks and, and more places, right. they could have at least got me to where I needed to go, right? Because right. we one thing I was oh, okay. is good about many communities is we have these resources um, that can help us out or at least get us on the right path. Right. Sure, indeed. Can I ask a, a one last question on credit, but focusing now on business credit? Um, you know, I think that, you know, uh, a lot of people that are starting small businesses or mom and pop stores, whatever that, you know, may need, uh, that loan or looking for a a business credit card to be able to put some things on to get started. Um, you know, one, I guess is, is that, you know, the things that make the business credit, is that the same as the, the things that create the personal credit score? And is there a way for, you know, uh, owners to, access what that score is yeah yeah and and y'all are business owners too so just please chime in so i've I've got an llc and with that i have um an ein so right so that's basically like social security number for the business right so because Mm -hmm. of that it allows me to be able to open up um business credit and um what i think um sometimes folks don't understand too is um sometimes in, in to your first question yeah it's the same thing you know paying it on time doing those things is going to keep your business credit well also so you want to be careful mm-hmm. of, of that um but there are like i'm thinking of like um i actually used to work for a company and one of the places we supported was american express right so they had a whole open um that was business card right and you could get credit cards or charge cards right so there's right. different lines that are open to businesses that might not be open um, to an individual. So definitely uh, check those out, but you're going to want to be diligent with it. But the good thing is, is if I've got a poor credit score, I have a chance with this business to mm-hmm. get something over here. And the mm-hmm. other thing is if I'm working really hard with the business tanks, like half businesses do fail, um, mm-hmm. that's also not going to work this personal credit score, not going to hurt this personal mm-hmm. credit score that, that I'm working on. So they could be two different things. Uh, but and y'all can add to this too, um, but those same principles kind of apply on being able to pay things back and having that available um, credit going to be important for that as well. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, you covered it well. Yeah, I don't, I don't have anything else to add. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, the other thing I, I would add to is, you know, for the person that, you know, like many of us were at that point and we didn't want to check it, you know, what what are the first steps that they would need to take um, 
to uh, to one you know figure out that score but two to you know to really be active in trying to maximize that score and raising it to its to as high as they can possibly get it what are those first steps for those people watching yeah i say rip that band-aid off just like you said you're afraid to look at it <laughs> look at it in its naked ugliness you know what i'm saying look at it and see another thing is if you're not looking at it you probably have some things that are hitting it that are not true um okay. as poor as my credit was i also yeah. had some things that were not true and wow. so here i'm just thinking yeah. yeah i am trash and and it's like okay i'm trash but that wasn't my trash <laughs> <Let> me, right <laughs> you, can, you can easily put in a dispute right and you can do right. all of this online you can put in a dispute um and most of them go through so make sure that first of all that stuff that's showing up is actually you um okay. i have a unique name so most of the stuff coming from opal tom chef school is probably me um but you, you all may have somebody who's different or someone who um you know stole your identity in some way someone who mm. never put put a bill in your name or something that was just yep. truly an honest mistake right. um so look at that to see if you can make sure that things are factual and then i think like all of us have said it just really takes being diligent right it right. takes looking at it um every day one one hack that i used was when i was actually um a few years ago i was trying trying to get a home um and my credit was a barrier um and so one of the and that's when you're trying to buy a home sometimes those things you might have to pay for the lender really wants to get you in so they'll right. give you something so she gave me like a rapid repair and this was printing out my mm. credit union from the three bureaus but also giving me a strategy within it. Like I, I kept these papers forever, like it was digital, but I printed out. So I kept them forever because it was like, if you pay off this, this, and this, here will be your score. If you do this, this, and this, here will be your score. So really gave me a plan to say, okay, this month I got 500 that I can put towards this. What does that look like to give me the best bang for it? You know, and if I can't do some of this till next year, what might roll off? So that was like mm. a super helpful hack. And if I would have paid a rapid repair, that would have cost me several hundred dollars instead of being able to put several hundred dollars, you know, towards really building it down. So there are so many strategies when it comes to and really understanding that it doesn't just mean um, starting with the biggest or starting with the smallest. Sometimes it could mean that, but it's really like taking the strategy and seeing, you know, what's hitting me hard. How can I get that off? And sometimes it's also picking up the phone. If debts are a little bit older and they've gone to a collection agency or they've sold it to another collection agency, they mm -hmm. might have bought your debt for $30. Your debt might be $500. They'll probably settle with you for $100, right? But you just got to put in that mm. time and get some mm. of those things off. Oh, okay. Frequencies are your issue. And then really for me, I had to make it a game um, when it came to paying those bills and watching my credit score rise and having that be something that gave me just as much satisfaction as shopping or anything else, right? I was loving to kind of see that that score rise. But for me, it was, it was definitely a mindset change. The first thing, the hardest thing, just like you said, Corey, the hardest thing was looking at it and mm. not going from it and really starting to be like, okay, this is something I, I can tackle. And for most of us, it, it's not that bad. It's like not that much. Like if money is your only problem, you ain't got no problems because somebody could come along and solve your problem like that and, and just really, you know, start start working at it and you can get to it. But it takes time. I would say that right. too. You got to be patient. Mm. You can work your ass off for three months and see, you know, four points, but keep, keep going. Right. And then it'll, kind of, it'll, it'll help and snowball. And if you get a setback, don't give up. Like we, we all, we all get that. That's some great advice. That's, that's some great advice. So I want to ask you, um, for a final question, this is, this is unrelated, but, um, who's like, who's your favorite MC right now? I'm just, I'm just interested to, uh, Oh see, man, I'm interested in that the, too. Uh, to be honest, see who you playing? See, I got so many. So my fate, my favorite MC right now is probably mm -hmm. the one who gets the most play right now is probably Nipsey. Um, and I, I like Ooh, Nipsey, mm, oh, yes. Blue Nipsey, mm -hmm. and I lived in that Victory Lap album for like three years. Like it was just a personal place for me. Um, so I love me some Nipsey, but uh, Jay Z is my favorite rapper um, of mm -hmm. all time. Um, I, I like some other folks that maybe nobody's heard of. Like I, I'm, I'm a female, so I really love like 3D Not T. She is an amazing female okay. rapper. Yeah, I've heard of her, but she spits. And some of some of your favorite rap songs, just pay attention. If you if you know a rapper is real hot, but they don't have the rhymes, and then they got this one song that came out, and you're like, damn, that was line after line. It was probably 3D Not T as a ghostwriter uh, because she <laughs> she's been doing that. So she's, <laughs> okay, she's definitely. Um, one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. I'm trying to think. I mean, I love I love J Cole too. Like I, you know, uh -huh. I got Lauren Hill behind me. This side, mm -hmm. I, 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 her genius to me is uh, 
that. And nobody's still messing with that 1998 album, Miss Education. Like, word for word, like... For real. No, no. Nah, nah. So, yeah, those are... Yeah, and I, I love some of the I love some of the youngins. I like YB and Corday a lot. I think he I think he's a great storyteller. Uh, I like Mulatto a lot. I think I think she's dope. Um, yeah, there there's a few. I like uh, G Herbo. I like him when I'm feeling like you know gutter. Let me listen to this. Let, me, <laughs> yeah. Chicago, let yeah. me let me listen right to what mm -hmm. he's about. But yeah, mm -hmm. I, I'm eclectic. My my playlist will range from like '94 <laughs> to last week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's my mood. How about y'all? Oh, well, I'm definitely well. I work out to Nipsey and DMX. Um, yeah, DMX. yeah, you know, I got like I got like different MCs for different moods. So yeah. when I'm really introspective and want to just sit down and chill, there's a couple of ones I I really like. Currency, I really like J Cole. Mm -hmm. Um, those are probably the top two right now. I like Larry June too. He's just super laid back, you know. Um, oh, after a hard day at work, I just I just want to. Sometimes I just want to vibe out to some. I don't really want to yeah. listen too deep. Um, but then of course I always got to bring it back to to Wu Tang. Um, in general, um, I find I find myself lately going back to a lot of '90s hip hop and kind of re-examining it, and then seeing like, oh wow, this was a lot doper than I thought it was. Right. You know, um, Lauren Hill is one of those artists where I'm like, I finally understand everything that she was talking about. Right, because <laughs> yeah. he's so so advanced. Um, Fonte from Little Brother, of course, is another one of my favorites. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm all over the place too. And, and some of the younger cats, I like the baby. I like little baby stuff. Yeah, I like yeah, holiday yeah. music. Um, yeah, yeah, I like Cardi B too. Yeah, I'm like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man, I'm gonna I'm gonna be the old head. I'm the one that's just holding on to yesterday, I guess. <laughs> man, 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 you know, I mean for me, the for me, Pac's a goat. That's where I'll start. I love Pac. I love everything right. about Pac. Mm -hmm. Um but you know I I think the you know of course, you know, Radio 22 is mainly old school hip hop and R and B. But one of the artists that I think has aged probably better than better than I thought he would. Um, was Nas. Yes, that's oh, true. That's I, true. I still play a yes. lot of Nas yes. in 2021. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. I gotta check the date. Yeah. Like, what year is this yeah. now? That's 2021. true. <laughs> it is for me. It has aged really well, and I can't say that about you know a lot of artists in the 90s. For me, it's right. something where I'm like. I'm playing Nas every week, multiple times a week. Um, so, you know, th those two, you know, really, you know, hold a, hold a, hold a special place. Um, but, you know, 90s, you know, was still my thing. You know, X mm. was big for me. I love Scarface. Yeah. You know, I'll still mm, play The Diary. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I loved Mob. You know, I loved uh, Wu-Tang. Um, you know, it, you know, I'm, I'm still playing those things. Um, as for right now, you know, I, I think the, bi the biggest thing I'm drawn to, um, where I'm really liking the consistency and how he continues to challenge himself is Jordan Lucas. Yeah. 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 I like him too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. for me, that's, that's that com that's that combination of, it sounds right to me. <laughs> it has some lyrical content and it has you know some of it has some messaging yeah and i'm and i'm yeah. like if you're able to pull off those things and do it consistently that's my thing in the beginning i'm like oh, i don't know if bro gonna be able to hold up you know but he's been consistent with it so i'll, I'll definitely give uh jordan lucas his credit yeah he has he has grown on me i've always known he had skills but i wasn't sure if i liked him Right. Uh, he has definitely, definitely grown on me and he pays homage is what I was going to say that I love. Right. Sometimes we're missing that and you, you got to pay homage that that's why the nineties was so dope because they, they did. Um, right. And yeah, you, you got to pay homage to that, but I would agree with that Nas. Mm -hmm. um, and Nas is still doing stuff that I'm quoting today. Like I, I hear daily in my head, <laughs> like the label sign yourself. That's a major key. Like I hear Nas <laughs> daily. He, he just wrote that a few yeah. years ago. Right. Man, right. He's yeah. Beyond genius to me. He's woo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like Nas for me, like Nas, Biggie, um, Jay. I love uh, AZ. I gotta put AZ in there. Yeah. yeah. There's like certain, yeah. there's just certain like, you know, Inspector Deck Redman, like all that whole for me, the mm -hmm. whole generation, 
to me, they're almost on a whole nother level. And then it's like everybody else is kind of coming up under them. So they're mm-hmm. kind of, they're like permanently embedded in my mind when it comes to, to music. Because I just, I, I play it so much still to this day, just like you, right. Corey. I don't even think about it. It's just like part of my day. Yeah. 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 Y'all see that Red Man Method Man versus? Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. So yeah. Much, that's what I have respect for. We were talking before we started about being an older MC and catching your breath and all that. Like, damn, it's a beat. No. Like, Method and, and Red. I was surprised about Red. I knew it was in shape too. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shape. Right. But Red Man, too, like, they didn't miss a beat. And I have so much respect for that. Like, so right. much respect for that. Still killing that crap. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it was dope. I love them too. That's what's up. That's what's up. Oh, ending on a good note with some hip hop. <laughs> always, always. That's what's up. Well, we appreciate you know. You, I mean, you're a host. Everybody going to see you, but we appreciate you taking the time to to school us on, um, you know, the 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 do's and don'ts when it comes to uh, credit credit repair and and predatory lending. Um, you know, I I think it's a much like we had you know the week before. Um, talking about money management, I think that credit is just that next step, especially if you are trying to move towards possibly investing and, yeah. and seeing if you can free up some capital to put in some other places to have money, make money for you. True. Um, yeah. So we greatly appreciate you taking the time to break it down for us. Yeah, no, thank thank you for having me. And and I'm still learning too, right? Still learning, still making mistakes. That's why I said be diligent because I had got laxed a little bit and I was like, oh mm-hmm. crap, right? I didn't hit this all the time. So yeah, still still learning mm-hmm. too. And I, like that question you asked about legislation, like laws are changing too. So we got to keep right. up on that too to see what, what can help us as well. That's what's up. That's well, what's well up. thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it, Opal. We really do. Yeah, always a pleasure. So make sure to check us out um, on social media. Um, you know, we are going to, we have our own page at uh, myradio22.com slash black currency podcast. You can always check this back at YouTube on our YouTube slash radio 22. Um, and we're also on IG. So make sure to look us up on there. We'll be posting uh, different things from the episodes and, and graphics and things like that that we come across but um yeah make sure to add us follow us on social media as well all right y'all oh the last thing we did want to leave you with because you had that book recommendation um what was that book recommendation so that people can go and check that out as well yeah yeah um the unbanking of america by lisa servon lisa servon right so make sure to check out that book as well. Um, we'll try and put a link in the description for y'all so you guys can check that out. All right. And we got anything else for them? I will say if, you talk, if you're talking books, uh, a book that's not written by a financial expert is uh, You Are a Badass by Jen Cicero. That's mm, the one. Right that's there. a good book. Like I heard book. about that book. She changed my life. She, she, she changed yeah. my life when it came to money. She did with that book. That was the key in there. She's got another one after that um, called You Are a Badass at Making Money. That's also really good. But it was that first one that, like, I remember being at my daughter's piano lesson and reading, and it was just like a... Yeah. It for me, because you you got to change your mindset about it. you got to go from a lack mentality, and it sounds like it's all positive thinking. It, it, it's it's real, though. Like, it, it is real. you got to go from a lack mindset to, to a gaining mindset, for sure. That book was instrumental for me. Me too. Like she, there. I remember there was a, because she has all these quotes in the book, and there was this one quote that was talking about a lot of people want to stay safe throughout their life just to comfortably make it to death. Mm. And I was mm. like, whoa. Yes. I never thought about it like that. So that book, yes. I co-signed. That book was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. All right, everybody. We appreciate everybody uh, tuning in and everybody listening in. Like I said, make sure you check out us on on social media. Um, I believe our episode three, we're going to start uh, stepping into the stock market and aspects of that. So make sure not to miss out on that one. Um, other than that, yo, we appreciate everybody. Thank you, Opal. Um, and yo, peace, love, peace, peace. happiness. You know how it go. <laughs> All right, y'all.